Hi, my name's Colin Pye, I'm one of the regional ministers and today I've come to St Andrew's Baptist Church in Bletchley. I've come to this church today because it's a home mission good news story. It's where we have given our home mission money to support this church and they've reached the point now where they're able to come off it. So we're going to listen to their story in their own words. <laughs> It was a, a wonderful um, congregation of around 25 um, dear people, committed and loyal to the church, um, who'd been through a, a long journey of uh, decline for about 20 years and were contemplating their future um, of where God was directing them. Others were leaving, um, but I felt that God asked me to stay and at the time I didn't know why, but since then I do know. I've been here since I was six years old. Well, when I was a lot younger, there was no one else really my age here. There was me and my sister and then a couple of other children. And so we addressed the church with a three-year vision, being the fact that I was going to be a student minister for three years. I asked the church, what do they want? And they said, we want to see more people, more young families come in to this church. So I said, okay, you've got three choices. You've got to decide whether you really want to stay as you are and assume that people would come in, which is not gonna happen. Um, therefore, you're gonna, you're gonna decline and I will be your student minister for three years and let the church die gracefully. Or you can say, let's, let's take a chance, let's step out and let's reach out to the community um, and with that uh, they said uh, that's what we really want to do so I said well it's going to cost you not more not so much money but you're going to have to change the change I was um, a, um, inviting them to uh, embrace was the change of approach to doing church the way that we're doing because nothing was changing because they were not changing we worked on a three-year strategy, a three-year vision plan for the church, a step-by-step, daisy-chain approach of services and events. One major step was to um, embrace a vision that we believe God has given us to become, first of all, a prodigal-friendly church, um, reaching out to those that used to go to church and are no longer, um, uh, no longer attending church. And then when Brian ended up coming to the church and we did all different outreach up services and people started coming, the, the demographics of the church completely changed and there's now more families, there's more young adults, there's more of every age group. Um, and I've been coming to this church for the last two years and I absolutely love coming here. Um, we come as a family and um, we just enjoy it every Sunday. We do winter night shelter where we take in 15 guests on a Monday evening, serving them with dinner overnight and bed and breakfast for a period of 15 weeks. We're involved with a weekly messy church where it is outreach to um, those within our community where ch young children can come and have fun and explore what Christ does for them. It's being able to um, deal with Caton House, a care home up in our actual location and everything where we can go and just sit and talk to these people over a cuppa but also bring them that worship. When we decided to introduce different styles of worship Clearly it would be difficult for people to embrace the, the drums and the, the loudness and the um, informality um, of that kind of worship. But they tolerated it, they committed themselves to making it happen and they welcomed all people into the church. And as a result of that, not only have we seen growth in the numbers of uh, people attending and ages attending and the diversity of the nationalities and the social backgrounds, but we've been able to provide the church with two styles of worship to accommodate that breadth of preferred style. It's just full of the spirit and moving and growing and wonderful, wonderful place to be. I 
love that phrase from the Central Baptist Association. It says, walking together in ministry and mission. And that is exactly what we're learning to do. And we uh, believe we're getting a little bit better every year. We can see the developments and the challenges where we need to improve on our understanding of what it means to be a united people for the glory of God. And we met um, Brian um, in hospital. Um, you know, we lost our mother, and um, which was terrible and devastating. And we're still really recovering from that from that time. He got the phone call, I guess, to say that you know we would like to have a Bible reading. That's all. That's all it said to us. Would you like a Bible reading? And would it like to be with the minister? They they said we can do it for you. And we said we prefer a minister. So um, we saw Brian, and um, he shared some words from God, and um, we just needed to hear more. Even though we'd, we'd, like I said, we've been brought up as Christians and we, we pray and we, we've always said the same thing in terms of loving God, but something, we were in a deep, deep discomfort. And uh, just meeting Brian at that time, we just needed to see him and just hear the word of God more as a family together and unite us. And uh, really that sort of like brought us uh, to coming here. We started coming to this church regularly. And um, even though we were going through a lot of sadness, we were just searching for God and we were just getting closer to Him and we were just so thankful that we just all wanted to go to God rather than get angry with God. And then I just felt, I just, just want to be baptised. I just felt I just need to be baptised. I just, I just need to have that, that sort of cleansing experience, shall we say, and I just needed to really just go for it. I just, just needed to do it. Oh, it was amazing, it was, it was amazing. Obviously I was a bit, um, you know, anxious to start with, you know, and is the water going to be cold, that sort of thing. Um, but it was just fabulous, you know, after the, um, you know, sharing my story, which is a bit nerve wracking because having to go through that devastation again, which is, which is very painful having to say the words about my mum and stuff like this. Um, but once that, was, once that was done, it was just a question, just enjoying the experience and just, um, there's a lovely peace that overflowed really. I just felt the peace of God with me and that's just really uh, what we yearn for, that peace that we just can't get on earth. And once you experience it from God, that peace, you just know this is something you can't just go to Tesco's to get. Um, only God will give it to you. Mm -hmm.